in progress. First pull is the Arbalist. Arbalist will kind of jump behind is your character, or at least where your back is pointed for the most part, and then do their mana sting. But these two left backs, I've always been, always, I developed the habit of opening up with fear on both of them just because I don't need it until the fourth pack. So I don't know. Waiting for that sting to go out so I insta dispel it using power word life to hopefully get the cooldown reduction on it. It's a very big tool that I use. Serenity's in between that. And whenever I'm not power word lifing or serenity, somebody who really needs to be healing, I'm gonna be flash healing them or healing them. And next pack again, I'm gonna open it up with the fear here. Again, don't know why I do it. There's a risen soldier. After he comes out of the fear, he's gonna start a knife dance. And as we have a mage, we want to always purge that mage buff. And if I don't do it, sometimes the NPC does, and NPC definitely gets his first one. Stopping that knife dance is, I don't want to say it's a higher priority. You just got to do both, right? But I got the follow-up purge, and that cast isn't even going off. I burned the Void Tentrals here, which is a big rip. As the next pull has two Risen Soldiers and arguably the hardest pull. But... During the fixates, largely you can just stand there and tank it. Shield yourself and spam yourself. And Shackle can be used to interrupt anything on any of these ads cast. Toughest pull here is two Risen Soldiers and a Risen Mage. The Risen Soldiers will both cast Knife Dance like five seconds in. That's my first mandatory Psychic Scream. That's because it's a double Knife Dance on top of dealing with the Mage. And if I had it, I would come in here... And hopefully get the first mind games out on the mage before its first cast happen. You still have to purge the buff after that and then chastise the mage potentially after that. But we are largely keeping everybody alive. And you might even have to guardian spirit your tank here because depending on the angle Jared goes into the mage, he can actually get hit in his back by the uh, risen soldiers, which is kind of stinky. But keeping people alive through the blitz and making sure I get the fear off like as soon as I can, those risen soldiers will be at the same timing. So once they start, once they like the wind up and then they start channeling, you want to interrupt on the channel. And then they're going to fix it right after this. We shackle one. Not something I did at all the time. Not a bad play at all. Because then you can just tank it. I didn't have my void tendrils, right? We will for the next one. And now when you have double knife dance and no psychic scream, you want to start casting. If I wasn't finishing the halo cast, I would have started shackling a little bit sooner, but you start your shackle cast halfway through it so that the one you're shackling finishes the wind up and the interrupt and the stop on knife dance actually takes and he doesn't recast it. And then after that, you just have to chain another shackle or if I had it, a chastise or a panda punch at the end of it. Remember Shining Force? Oof. Just do double shackle here. And then throw some AoE healing out. Two Risen Soldiers are actually like the beefiest two mobs you can get. Like two mages would suck, but they don't have a single pole with two mages. I think they used to have a pole. Maybe they change it. Maybe I'm lying. But here's one knife dance. The other guy's gonna die. That's a power word life. The big boy. And then I'm tanking this. Like again, the fixate on one of them isn't bad. You get like inner will procs for yourself. You all the self-healing you can need in the world. This pulls mage, arbalist, and soldier, which is easier than the pull we just did. But the arbalist jumps back basically to like your spawn point and he's so far away and it's kind of hard to see. You can't see the line camera gets, you know, askewed by the architecture, etc. whatever. If you can manage it, try to point your back to the left or right of like the doorway or even at the gate itself. And the arbalist will ideally jump in those directions. Emeralds apply though. We purge every stack the mage cast. And when that soldier starts knife dancing, we are going to CC it. I also mind game as a mage there. We still have to purge that buff. I think we're going to get a freebie. No, it just falls off. I'm just a little lucky there. Get a life that didn't crit on the hunter. And everybody's fine, though. Nobody's going to take, you know, kill you damage. 
Unless I just let the knife dance chat them, which um guess what I do. And I pressed divine him for the first time all night, and it was enough to save everybody's butt. And this is one point, no no follow up talents on it. I was pretty happy with that. I was ready to just uh, do another pull. And just wanted to make sure, in case that thing didn't die before the sting went out, that I didn't have to deal with it. And again, if you get hit with the sting, you can. If you dispel yourself within like a half a second of getting stung, maybe last quarter second, it won't tick and you don't lose your mana yet. So just hope is not lost. But if you lose your mana, anything other than like the very last pull and you're not playing with a mind bender, you're kind of crappy. Mana largely not an issue, but you start getting real spammy to get your holy words back. You know, renew ourselves, fade, power word shield, healing satchel, and we're gonna kill this first floating eye. And then after that goes off, we're probably going to you know what? We're going to halo into an empowered Nova that was also buffed via the talent after casting power word shield. Pretty ballsy. But I've desperate prayer up, so I have like 15k health. Now I've lost it. So whenever you're at a normal amount of health, and you have no DR or anything, you just want to be topped. You always want to be topped off. Then, you know, no big deal. Use everything. You don't really need your healing anything for the next like minute and a half, two minutes. Now this pack here, between Halo and Empowered Nova, they all die really, really quick. You can just go in with a normal Nova and spam it like five times and they all die. Drag this guy to the edge here and DPS him down. I keep power and fusion for the next pull. The guy up the stairs has a bunch of health. And on the five minute timer, we're one minute in and we're doing great. Anytime these little green things come near you, you can holy Nova just to have them die. As this fence opens, there's three ads to heal and one to dispel. The one to dispel is the Panic Soul, right? Just dispel that, right? The Damage Soul, at, at least the very first one, starts at slightly too high health to power word life. I mean, I, at this point, I think he's way further than that. So I just start dumping Serenities in. I think Apotheosis too. Not tough at all. Just know that if you're a little slow, like even now, I'm a little worried about this third guy because they can die. And when they die, they turn into guys. I think soldiers... They have a lot of health, and they take a long time to kill. And again, the little Naru firing, firing meatballs. We can use anything Shackle to stop that. We have a Fear Panda Punch. That side is coming up. Not a big deal. Now, let's go up the stairs. If you have Fade, probably use it, because I think they seek you out a little bit. Either way, <laughs> you just get hit like me. But you can still just know about everything. And get this opened super duper fast. That's Dread Corruptor. Like, he has some of the eyeballs, but he himself isn't going to do anything. The Mind Spikes don't do too much other than put you under max health, so... Just make sure when you're dealing with these flickering eyes, you have uh, some kind of cooldown. They were getting kind of close, honestly, but we have Desperate Prayer up. The eyes teleport. We move away from them because that's going to be AOE bad stuff. Like Insta. Not Insta, but it's going to tick, tick, tick. Move away from the eyes. And take all the time. We have two minutes. We get to kill the Dread Corruptor and the Flickering Eye. There's no rush. Also, keep in mind, if you do run the little Naru talent where he helps you out, he can be the, you know, he, that thing can kill one of the eyes for you. A lot of damage, a lot of healing. Love that. And yeah, no, no power word death. No, absolutely not. I've died enough. I feel it's rough enough to give like a second life up or second charge of serenity. You have until you open the store to just hang out really. And you're gonna get going. As we come up here, if you probably keep mending on as many, um, all of them, that'd be ideal. But I'm gonna go around here and mark the archers because when the man pulls three ghosts up, 
if one of them is an archer and I don't think I can heal all three of them, I'm going to let the archer go through because they're arguably less lethal. Also, if you let at least one ad go through, you do get time to drink. If you want to drink before the final boss in this section, you're going to make sure you let one go, go through. Like I said, archers are good candidates. You keep your, your group up, but you also got to heal as many of these as you possibly can. I kind of peeved I hit Guardian Spirit on the Hunter there, but we're going to try to get Power Word Life off instantly. And then sometimes it's available for the very last guy. And see this archer, and I only do him first because I'm like panicking because I don't think I can get all three. And Jared was getting kind of low, right? Oh yeah, and I, I like bricked my power word life on myself or something. Let, not, let another one go through. We let both of these go through. This was upsetting. But my team was looking low, huge. That was a serenity too. Too that wasn't even a power word life. That was power word life. Get the soldier healed up and see if you're using voodoo or healbot or anything that gives you a health frame like in combat. Just like as every other time this has been a thing in the mage tower, it can sometimes not work. And we're going to let that guy go through too. He's an archer. Nobody cares. Hunter is dead, dead. <laughs> like divine him. Uh, not bad at all in this case. Kept my team alive. And did most of it did 60 plus percent of the healing on three of these? Second time I pressed it. It was the time I, this the time I did it. A dark force reaching into my mind. So this is going to be kind of hairy. I think we got an archer, a mage, and two soldiers. Your magic is weak. We. And this is the first time I've ever pulled that specific combination of these mobs in this room. So it gets kind of dicey. First the mage. We fear, kind of panic fear. Yeah, we panda punch and chastise to make sure the knives stop. Jared soaks the mana sting, which we dispel. He's got two stacks on the Risen Mage, but he's going to die before he casts. Ooh. And then we have somebody else soak this. Again, two soldiers are pretty beefy. The only thing worse than two soldiers and an Arbalist are two soldiers and a mage. Yeah, I think here's a like in cast. Don't think I can do anything fast enough. But once we get this one guy down, this is way easier. Fear came back up. We hit the fear. Mind game something, idiot. Mind game's one of them knife boys. Doofus. And the time to get the drink, by the way, was before this pull, not after, but you can actually sneak it if you're like crazy good like I am. Look, look how good I am. I got 8% mana. I mean, that's not bad. And here we're just planting jumps. Every jump he does does that. And to my knowledge, you can't stun him incoming and prevent the puddle like you can with Cruel. I might be wrong. I wasn't able to do it on this pull. I'm not doing I'm going back. And he's going to jump on you, like, whenever he wants, every what, 20 seconds, some shit like that. And then he's going to put this debuff on. You can see it just under my right foot. This debuff is like Karazhan 2.0 Nightbane. It explodes, dealing more damage the more health you have to your friends. And essentially, this means you got to run in and stay at... I probably stay too low. Because I noticed that when I was still at 60 plus percent and didn't like kill everybody. I keep yourself low and you can pretty much just do that by standing in the green as much as you need to. And in between that, hit all your damage buttons, hit all your stuns and your fears and do whatever you can to drag the fight out with uh, Urgis as long as you can. The fight timer is essentially him filling the room up with green circles. And say there's 15 seconds between each circle, it's probably 
probably a, a very different number. But if you can extend that by two, three, four seconds every now and then, that's going to add a couple of extra circles worth of time. If you do no damage, you will run out of room. So keep your dot up. And once we get around here to the floor architecture here that juts out, if your like foot is like right here and the boss is right like here, you're going to be a line of sight. It's actually a real big pain in the butt, and you're going to be a line of sight your friends too. So anyway, here's first blow up. Jerry gets a little low. Power onward life. And again, we're like. I know I need to press buttons. We press the mind games. We press holy fire stun or chastise, right? And see, right here, I thought I had more blind of sight issues, but maybe it was a different pull. I got the debuff on me. This is when I blew up at way more health than I wanted to. So I was at 60 plus, and it looks like it returned maybe half of that in damage. I felt like that used to do more, maybe not. And again, if you can get him to jump back into his puddle or overlap it, to any degree, you're going to buy yourself a lot of time. Sanctify after the blow up's a nice button. Guardian Spirit just for the healing increase, because Jared does have a lot of health. Sometimes it's hard to top him off if you don't have a holy word. And I mean, always have Twisted Fate, I guess. But here's where I have, yeah, I'm having LOS issues. He's not. I'm fucking... Get the heels up. My dot's coming in probably any second now. And the dots in the jump, I feel like they desync because it's not a dot every jump. So you will have different periods where, like, it's blowing up right as the jump goes out. I guess, like, right there, right? Where if you're too, too low, that jump might kill you, although it didn't seem to do too much damage. And I know here I'm running out of space, so I'm like, okay, we're going to start making space. And like throwing the fear out there, just buying myself some time. As soon as the explosion went off, we did the full heal and should have stayed right there. We would have been fine. Twenty-five percent health. Obviously, if you have lust or potion or an on you trinket or something like do that. Power word life. No, that was just serenity. Holy business. You see here I'm I gotta get myself low. And I might as well, you're probably going to bait the jump before this blow up. Because I, looking back, I would have definitely stayed in the green and not moved off to the right. Yeah, I stand by it. No shadow word death. Also, if you blow up with the debuff and kill a teammate after he dies, you lose the challenge. Don't be that person. We've done it. If you're still with us, thanks for watching, guys. I hope this helped. If you're having difficulty, this is a tough one. Give yourself all the patience in the world. A lot of fun, though. A lot of different ways you can tackle it. I'm not a priesty scientist at all, but I had a good time. Glad it's over.